All right, my name is Brian Cardell, and I am a developer advocate at Egalia. And I would like to talk to you about uh, speech in the W3C, and particularly the web speech APIs. Um, so members of W3C have been involved and interested in doing things with speech for a really long time, uh, beginning in the late 1990s. This is sort of an incomplete list of uh, rec track things and, and standards efforts that various members have worked on. In the late 90s, there was a whole bunch of different markup languages and we also have things like CSS speech and spoken HTML, which we'll hear about in a little while. And screen readers are on here. I'll explain why in a minute. But uh, most of the people involved in these efforts did not make a web browser. And so while many of those even reached REC uh, and enjoyed some success outside of browsers, that's not what's shipped in browsers. What's shipped in browsers is the HTML5 speech APIs. Now, I say HTML5 speech APIs, but in fact, they are not part of HTML5, and they are not even a standards track document. They were created in two community groups in 2010 and 2012. They were largely pioneered by Google. Uh, if you don't know about them, the API service, the basics are fairly simple. Uh, you create this speech synthesis utterance, giving it a string. Uh, it has some simple properties, pitch, rate, volume, language, and you pass that to the speech synthesis global and ask it to speak the utterance. So the basics of text-to-speech are like pretty straightforward. So the interesting thing is, while I said they were created in a community group, largely pioneered by Google, in the end, these wound up being actually kind of widely deployed. Now, if you're not familiar with how to read one of these can I use, I will just draw your attention to this top global number. This says about 94.97% of browsers support this. But you'll also notice that there are like lots and lots of footnotes in here. And that's because this is actually really hard to measure because uh, despite the API, um, browsers do not actually speak in the same way that screen readers do not actually speak. Uh, this means that it's impossible to say that Chrome, for example, supports this or WebKit supports this. Uh, or Firefox supports this uh, because in fact they are coordinating with underlying subsystems and so uh, Chromium for example or WebKit they have sort of hooks that the ports need to plug into or provide or rely on the operating system uh, and that leaves it kind of a little bit all over the place. So the architecture for how this works is actually unspecified and uh, also kind of uncoordinated and the API services for this are also a little aged and imperfect. So where this creates some interesting challenges, um, everything is queue managed, but there are no asynchronous concepts that we have today. Uh, and because of the lack of specification and coordination of a framework or architecture, um, there are things that are specified by the specification that are really not true and kind of can't be true. So for example, if you have two utterances and you ask for one to be spoken and then you change a parameter after you've enqueued it, uh, the spec says that should throw, but in practice is a really complicated answer to whether or not that will throw. And you can't know the answer. <laughs> it's racy. So, but other undocumented limits exist here that are interesting to challenging. So for example, how big a string can you create an utterance with is not really specified. And it's sort of impossible to know. And so uh, you could hand it a chapter of a book and where it will stop reading is unknowable to you. And it will vary from uh, implementation to implementation. There are all kinds of actual spec and reality gaps here. Like the spec says you should be able to use SSML uh, here, but in reality, uh, the truth is, <laughs> that we don't know if you can use SSML. And it seems that at least in most implementations, all of the ones that I tried uh, will actually read you the SSML as code, which is measurably worse than just giving it text. Uh, voices and languages support is also super tricky. There is, tries to be some coordination here, but lacking any kind of real architecture or coordination, uh, this is really messy. The available voice varies from every system and Depending, it can vary from day to day which services are available. Uh, they can change out from underneath you after you've queued something uh, because in a lot of operating systems, you sort of set the thing once and then it reuses that. 
And so another program can actually change it. So you can have things speaking in one voice, go and use another program that changes the voice, come back to the first program, and you're left with the second program's voice. Uh, this can even change in the same system while things are in the queue. So you'll notice this if you're driving down the road, you're listening to Google Navigation, for example, and then you hear this really nice voice. But then at some point you hear this robotic, more clunky voice. That's because you lost you know, internet connectivity. And so they're using a local service on the device as opposed to going back. But there's no way to know this or really discover it. Uh, on the other end is speech recognition. And this is a more complicated interface and its support story is not quite as good. But uh, it has lots and lots of events because it has no real asynchronous primitives or coordination. So they try to just add a lot of things and events where you can cancel or intercept. Uh, but really for the happy path, you want this one event on result and there's stop, start and pause. And from that, your event object will have a results property in which most of the case, what you'll want is the zeroth zeroth dot transcript property that will tell you what was said. Uh, that sounds really complicated. Why do that? Uh, that's because it was trying to handle a lot of things. So you can actually request a max number of alternatives in case it wasn't clear. This will frequently include some level of confidence value measure, which is kind of arbitrary, but I guess it's useful. Uh, there is also this concept of a continuous mode in which you would just get the last one. It would just perpetually grow. Uh, but this is actually buggy in the implementation that had it and Firefox just said, we're not gonna actually support that. You can just stop it and start it. In reality, that is also an incomplete answer because on mobile devices, you hear an audible ding when it starts listening. And so when you do this stop and start, you just are flooded with dings and it creates an unusable interface. Uh, so again, a lot of the problems here have to do with the lack of architecture. Uh, the spec says that you, the spec implies that there are these local services and that there are these other services. And in practice, there are, but there's no actual connection for to make them work, which is a shame. So where does this leave us? Uh, that sounds like a lot of negative things, but I think this actually leaves us in a situation that is a lot like the web pre HTML5, which if you don't know, we had very, very, very poor interop. A lot of things were unspecified entirely or underspecified. So for example, uh, the HTML parser itself was not specified at the time, despite lots of actually very useful implementations that we found great ways to work around. Uh, but here, I think that the lesson that we can learn is that there is value in evolution over revolution. We can iterate on these things. We can improve them. We can learn lessons to paper over them and experiment with what better APIs might look like. We can slowly add better primitives. Uh, I think there are many, many opportunities to align with new platform architecture since then, new features and, and thought in the platform since then. And I think we should do it. So I opened a tag issue that this is a really interesting, historically unique thing, and we should talk about it. Uh, lots of related things here would benefit from this. Uh, tag seemed to kind of agree, but like what to do with it is hard. So uh, it had entered the strategy funnel a few years ago, and uh, there's been wondering what to do with that. And since then, there's been a lot of interesting efforts and work from all over the W3C, even from vendors, the, the Apple just recently did some interesting things in this space. So uh, that's what leads us to these presentations today. And uh, there is much more on my blog. There's a whole series of articles if you want to go read them. But uh, that's, I think, where we're at. Thanks.